Appendix three of History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume One by Henry Charles Lee. Appendix three. Spanish coinage. The question of values has significance in so many of the operations of the Inquisition that an outline of the successive mintages of Spain becomes almost a necessity. The subject is complicated, after the middle of the sixteenth century, by the progressive but fluctuating depreciation in the moneda de velon, or base coinage, which became practically the standard of value in all transactions. The monetary unit of Castile was the maravedi, anciently a gold coin of value, but in the fifteenth century diminished to a fraction of its former estimation. A declaration of Ferdinand and Isabella, in 1503, says that formerly the silver real was equal to three maravedis, but now it is worth thirty-four. The unit of weight was the mark, or half-pound, of eight ounces, or four thousand six hundred and eight grains. The intermediate weights were the ochavo, of seventy-eight grains, the adarme, of thirty-six, and the tomen, of twelve. These were applicable to all the precious metals, but, up to 1731, the mark of gold was reckoned to contain fifty castellanos of eight tomines, making forty-eight hundred grains, whereby the grain was reduced one twenty-fifth. The standard of fineness was fixed, by Ferdinand and Isabella, for gold at twenty-three and three-quarter carats, but was reduced by Charles V to twenty-two carats, at which it remained. For silver the standard maintained since the fourteenth century was known as once dineros cuatro granos, pure silver being doce dineros, equivalent to point nine two five fine. In 1709, Philip V reduced it to once dineros, or point nine one six six seven, and in some mintages even lower. Gold Coins When Ferdinand and Isabella revised the coinage, in 1497, they ordered the mark to be worked into sixty-five and one-third excellentes de la Granada. This coin was worth three hundred and seventy-four maravedis, and was thus practically the same as the ducat, or escado, which was rated at three hundred and seventy-four. There were also the duble alfonsi, or castellano, or peso de oro, equal to four hundred and eighty-five, the duble de la banda to three sixty-five, the florin to two sixty-five. Thus the ducat, which was the coin most frequently quoted, was equivalent to eleven silver reales. The ratio between gold and silver fluctuated between seven and eight to one. In 1537 Charles V ordered coronas and escudos, twenty-two carats fine, to be worked sixty-eight to the mark, and to be worth three hundred and thirty maravedis, which he says was the weight and fineness of the best crowns of Italy and France. With the progressive depreciation in the value of silver, the coinage law of Philip II in 1566 raised the escudo from 330 marks to 400. From 330 maravedis to 400. The old ducats were to be current at 429 maravedis, the castellanos at 544. The tendency of silver continued downward, and in 1609 Philip III permitted the escudo to pass for 440 maravedis, threatening three years' exile and a fine of five hundred ducats for asking or receiving more. In 1612 he allowed the Castellano, in bullion, to be sold for five hundred and seventy-six maravedis, under the same penalties for exceeding it. The escudo, or crown, remained the standard gold coin. In 1642 it was raised to five hundred and fifty maravedis, in 1643 to six hundred and twelve, and then reduced to five hundred and ten, owing to variations in the silver and vellon coinage. In 1651 it is rated at sixteen silver reals, in 1652 at fourteen, in 1686 at fifteen, but with the new coinage of lighter weight silver it was raised to nineteen, and the doublon, or piece of two escudos, to forty reals. For larger transactions multiples of the escudo were struck, known as doblones de a dos, de a cuatro, and de a ocho, containing respectively two, four, and eight escudos. The latter, which became popularly known as the Spanish doubloon, were rated, in 1726, at eighteen pesos, or pieces of eight silver reals, in 1728 at sixteen, in 1737 at fifteen, 
and in 1779 at sixteen again, the doubloon and the peso being virtually of the same weight, each a fraction under an ounce. In 1738, to supply the lack of silver money, there were coined half-crowns of gold, worth in vellon eighteen reals, twenty-eight maravitas. This fraction was troublesome, and in 1742 the weight was changed to correspond with twenty reales, and the coins became known as ventenos or escuditos. Silver Coins The silver unit was the real, which under the coinage laws of Ferdinand and Isabella was worked sixty-seven to the silver mark, of eleven dineros four grains fine, point nine to five, worth thirty-four maravitas. It long continued of this standard, but in the financial mismanagement under Philip the Fourth, the weight was reduced by ordering the mark worked into eighty-three reals and one cartillo, eighty-three and one-quarter reals, the old coinage in circulation being advanced twenty-five per cent, in value, by making the peso equivalent to ten reals instead of eight. But as this failed to afford the expected relief, it was suspended in 1643, to be again tried in 1684, when the real was reduced to eighty-four to the mark, and the old coinage was rated at ten to eight of the new. In 1709 we first hear of the peseta, a name applied to the French coin introduced by the War of Secession, rated at two reals, and subsequently used to denote the double real of Spanish mintage. At the same time the standard was reduced to eleven dineros, or point nine one six six seven fine. During the subsequent years of the reign of Philip V, the variations in the silver coinage were numerous and perplexing. The peso, escuda de plata, or piece of eight reals, was the leading coin, and in 1726 it was ordered that it, whether minted in the Indies or in Spain, should be current for nine and one-half reals, and, as this did not bring it to an equivalent with gold, in 1728 it was declared equal to ten reals. This, however, was now confined to the mintage of the Indies, which came to be known as Plata Nacional. The small coinage of the Spanish mints was termed provincial, and was allowed to remain current at a discount of twenty per cent. It was seventy-seven reals to the mark, and the fineness was only ten dineros, reduced in 1728 to nine dineros, twenty-two grains, or point seven nine eight fine, rendering it in reality only about three-quarters the value of the standard. There were thus two entirely distinct silver currencies coexistent, and to these was added a third, popularly known as Marias, Plata Nueva que Vulgarmente se llaman Marias, which was called in by decree of April twenty seventh, seventeen twenty eight, but which was still in circulation in seventeen thirty six. Under these circumstances, considerable circumlocution was necessary when quoting sums in silver to define the exact kind of coin meant as, for instance, in the coinage law of July 16, 1730, we are told that the allowance for expenses to the official known as the fiel was un real de plata provincial, valor de sixteen cuartos de vellon. In fact, as we shall see, the debased coinage known as vellon had become the real standard of financial transactions. In the later periods it will simplify the appreciation of amounts recorded to remind the reader that the peso, or piece of eight reals, is the modern dollar, and the real, or one-eighth of this, is the coin familiarly known of old in various parts of the United States as the bit, the eleven-penny bit, shortened to levy, the ninepence or the shilling. The maraveda was one-thirty-fourth of this, or about three-eighths of one cent. In the colonies there is frequent allusion to the peso and sellado as distinguished from the peso de aocha, which I gather to be a piece worth four hundred maravedas, or nearly eleven and three-quarters reals, a little more than a ducat. Vellon Coinage The debased coinage known as vellon was an alloy of silver arid copper, which proved the source of unutterable confusion in Spanish finance. As we find it prescribed by Ferdinand and Isabella in 1497, it is merely a token coin convenient for small transaction, consisting of seven grains of silver to the mark of copper, worked into 192 blancas, the blanca being one-half of the maravedi. Complaints were made that it was exported at a profit, so that it became scarce, and in 1552 Charles V, to remedy this, reduced the silver to five grains. The extravagant expenditures of Philip II rendered him eager to clutch at any expedient to relieve immediate necessities, and in 1566 he adopted the unfortunate device of issuing a moneda de Vellonrica, 
with two and one-half dineros, two grains, ninety-eight grains of silver to the mark of copper, to be worked into quartillos, eighty to the mark, worth one quarter real or eight and one-half maravitas, into quartos, one hundred and seventy to the mark, worth four maravitas, and medios quartos, three hundred and forty to the mark, worth two maravitas. The blancas, or half maravitas, were retained, but the silver in them was reduced to four grains to the mark, worked into two hundred and twenty pieces. Although there do not appear ever to have been larger coins of vellon issued than those authorized by Philip the Second, the flood of this inferior money supplanted the precious metals. It became the basis of all internal transactions, and the precious metals were reduced virtually to the position of commodities. There was a restamping of this coinage in 1602, in which the silver was omitted, put into forced circulation at a value of seven to two. With all the power of Spain, backed by the treasures of the New World, and wielded by an autocratic monarchy, it was impossible to maintain so vicious and artificial a currency at par, and there followed, during the seventeenth century, a series of the most desperate attempts to remedy the evils which were crippling the commerce and industry of the nation. In 1619, there was a solemn promise made that no more of the pernicious stuff should be issued for twenty years, a promise only made to be broken, and renewed in 1632. In 1625, under the severest penalties, the premium on gold and silver was limited to ten per cent, and in 1628 the nominal value was reduced one-half, but in 1636 the permissible premium on silver was recognized as twenty-five per cent, immediately after which the vellon coinage was restamped and trebled in value. In 1640 the premium was allowed to be twenty-eight per cent, and in 1641 there was another restamping, and the value was doubled, followed by recognizing the premium as fifty per cent. In some accounts before me of the salaries and expenses of the Supreme Council of the Inquisition, not dated, but evidently belonging to this period, the figures set down are increased when added, in one case by twenty-eight per cent, and in another by fifty, to adjust them to the currency in which they were expected to be paid. In other statements some items are specified as payable in vellon and others in plata. In the effort to bring the vellon to par in 1642, it was suddenly reduced to one-sixth of its current value, and then, in 1643, it was raised fourfold. This resulted, in 1647, in a premium of twenty-five per cent., but when, in 1651, it was again restamped and restored to the value which it bore prior to 1642, the premium rose to fifty per cent. In June 1652, another attempt was made to reduce it to one-fourth, but this seems to have been a failure, and in November the edict was suspended. In 1660 its further issue was suspended, and the experiment was again tried of an alloy containing twenty grains of silver to the mark, or about one over 230, which became known as the moneda de molino de vellon ligado. This was so unsuccessful, that in 1664, its nominal value was reduced to one-half, and all other vellon currency was prohibited, while in February, 1680, a still further reduction of 75 per cent in its value was ordered, and in May its use was forbidden, it was declared to have no value as currency, and the premium of 50 per cent was permitted as against other vellon coins, which had still continued in circulation. This lasted for four years, when in 1684 the moneda de molino was restored to circulation, with a nominal value double that of the last reduction. With the eighteenth century the pretense of alloying copper with a fraction of silver was abandoned. In 1718 a pure copper coinage was issued, and by this time the premium on specie recognized by law had advanced to nearly one hundred per cent. In spite of the prohibition to ask or receive more than this, people were forced to pay more. Traders kept the copper coinage tied up in bags representing the larger coins, and refused to furnish the latter except at an advance. The premium gradually rose, until, in 1737, the Real de Plata Provincial was recognized legally as worth two reals de vellon, and the real plata nacional is worth two and a half. Although there were no coined reals de vellon, they were the standard money of account on which all transactions were based. In the laws regulating the mints, the salaries of the officials are always stated in vellon. Thus, in 1718, the superintendent of the Mint of Madrid has 24,000 reals de vellon, the treasurer 16,000, and so forth. In 1728, the superintendent is allowed 500 escudos de vellon, 
the Contador, four hundred, etc. In 1730 it is provided that the sum of one hundred and twenty thousand reals de vellon is to be placed in the hands of the treasurer for current expenses, and he is to give in security twenty thousand ducados de vellon on unencumbered real estate. From this it follows that, when the kind of coin is not specified, there may be some difficulty in estimating the value of a sum of money mentioned. The difference between silver and vellon went on increasing. In 1772, when a new coinage of gold and silver was issued, the gold escudo, worth sixteen reals de plata, was declared to be worth thirty-seven and one-half reals de vellon. With the revolution the old coinage passed away and was replaced by the decimal system, the peseta and centimo being equivalent to the French franc and centime. Yet prices continue to be quoted in reals, which are now rated at twenty-five centimos, or about five cents of American money. Nothing is more difficult than to ascertain accurately the variation in the purchasing power of money, but perhaps the price of labor affords the most trustworthy standard. In the fifteenth century this would seem to have been about six maravedas a day. In the eighteenth, common laborers employed in the mints received three and one-half reals de vellon per diem, while those in more confidential positions, such as watchmen, were paid six. As a matter of course, the kingdoms of the crown of Aragon had their independent systems of coinage, which were based on the old divisions of the mark, almost everywhere prevalent, of libras, sueldos, and dineros, or pounds, shilling, and pence, there being twenty sueldos to the libra, and twelve dineros to the sueldo. In the documents of the early period there are frequent fluctuations in the relations between these coins and the Castilian system, but as a rule there were reckoned twenty Aragonese sueldos to the ducat, which therefore was equivalent to the libra. In Catalonia the sueldo Barcelonese was twenty-four to the ducat, and there was also a coin known as Morabatan, equal to nine sueldos. Unification of currency throughout the monarchy was a desirable object, long frustrated by the stubborn particularism of the provinces. It was especially difficult to bring about in Catalonia, where the vellon coinage had been largely diluted by the Allies during their long occupation of the Principality in the War of Secession. An edict of 1733 informs us that there were twenty-four dineros to the Catalan Real, but most of those in circulation of the coinage of 1653 had been re-stamped by the Allies to double their nominal value. They had also coined dinerios catalanes, with the same alloy of silver as the mentions of 1653, but with only half the weight, yet circulated at the full value. The edict denounces the dinerios of both Aragon and Catalonia as an intolerable abuse, and with superfluous emphasis orders that their use be abandoned, immediately in Aragon and Catalonia, as soon as sufficient money of vellon can be coined to take their place. The effect was futile, for another edict of 1737 assimilates the dinerio of Aragon and Valencia to the Castilian Ochavo, or piece of two maravedas, and the dinerio of Catalonia to one maravede. In 1743, in consequence of disputes arising between troops quartered in Catalonia and the peasants, it was ordered that the vellon money of Castile should circulate freely in Aragon, Catalonia, and Majorca. As late as 1772, an edict calls in the local small coinage of Valencia and orders it replaced with Castilian money, but this was so unsuccessful that it was followed, in 1777, with one confining the use of these coins to Valencia and forbidding their circulation elsewhere. When the unification of the currency occurred does not clearly appear, but it probably was not until the revision of the monetary system in the present century. The old Cruzado of Portugal, to which reference sometimes occurs, was virtually the same as the Spanish ducat. End of Appendix 3